Welcome everybody to Extreme Off-Road Silly Bills and today we're dealing with the 1970 Dodge Coronet Super B. Now this has 1,750 horsepower, 1,475 pounds-feet of torque from a 7.4 litre twin turbocharged V8 engine. The car itself now weighs 2,880 pounds, has off-road tyres, all-wheel drive and off-road suspension and it can now do 0 to 60 in 2.268 seconds, 0 to 104.915 seconds and going to a top speed of 220 miles an hour. So if you can hear the fan in the background, I do apologise, but there is a heat wave in the UK at the moment, so I do apologise, but I cannot stay in my room without any, you know, ventilation, so that's just the way it is. But yeah, as far as muscle cars go on this series, well, we've only really had the one that's been successful, and that is a Plymouth Barracuda, uh, which got into third place of which was a massive surprise given you know everything it's been going up again it was everything it's up against so uh yeah whether or not this can do as good we'll have to see but yeah it's speed acceleration launch and uh braking are all reasonable off-road capability is a little bit on the low side normally they're above seven at least so uh yeah that is a bit of a, a downer and a bit concerning but what is even more concerning is obviously the handling it's not a car meant for this kind of power even with all the upgrades i've given it so yeah it's going to be a big ask, but yeah, let's see what it can do. It should be fun, even if it's not going to be particularly quick. But it would be uh, equally as fun if it was quick. Because like I said, I was not expecting that Barracuda to be as quick as it was, and it was hugely enjoyable when, you know, I saw the time at the end, so... Let's see if this can do any better. Now, despite having a bit of an accident, uh, the Lexus RCF Track Edition also got into 7th place in the previous episode, so it'd be nice to see if we could do better than that as well, given you know that had a far better handling than this. Ooh, bouncy, bouncy. And obviously this has really, really long overhangs, so... Could potentially get caught up on some stuff. Not that it's gonna beat us or anything, but it could, you know, throw us around. It's pretty perfect around that corner. And at least this is now light, uh, unlike some cars that we've had on this series. Even if it is still humongous in size and width and length and whatever else. At least it's not, you know, more than 3,000 pounds. Which means this massive amount of power, even if it's not all getting used due to not having much grip on these surfaces, is going to be, you know, not having to deal with that much in the way of weight to lug around either, which is beneficial. Not much in the way of understeer either. Which is surprising given, you know, the amount of engine up front and the all-wheel drive system. Got 150 down there, pretty good. A little bit slow into that corner there. But 
That is a pretty fast time. I think we have actually beaten the Lexus. Yep, at 3 minutes 17.322. We're not just beating the Lexus from the previous episode. We have beaten most cars in this series. In fact, we've beaten the Barracuda. Which just goes to show that these late 60s, early 70s muscle cars can perform very well on this series. Obviously, we've had, you know, the downer that was the Oldsmobile Tornado, but that was quite heavyweight still, even with upgrades. But yeah, that means we've got now two American muscle cars in the top five. And this has, uh, yeah, beaten the uh, Barracuda by more than 0.2 of a second, uh, as well as the McLaren 765LT, the Nissan GTR Nismo, the McLaren 620R, the Lexus RCF Track Edition in the previous episode by more than two seconds nearly three seconds in fact, uh, as well as the Toyota Tacoma TRD Pro, Ford Mustang Mach-E 1400 and we've knocked the Nissan Safaris 370Z Safari Rally Tribute out of the top ten. So uh, yeah, that is uh, massively surprising again. Obviously it's got more power than the Barracuda did, about 250 horsepower more, but it is a larger car, it might not weigh as much or you know, even more than. Uh, I'm just trying to see if I've got my notes from that episode or not. Because I'm pretty sure that was... Yeah, the Barracuda was actually a little bit heavier at £3,111. So, yeah. Uh, I think that's probably because its engine is larger and it has two sub superchargers on it. Which, the superchargers are obviously heavier than turbochargers. So, yeah, this weighs about, you know what, nearly nearly 300 pounds, no, 231 pounds less while having 250 horsepower more and in terms of torque it had a 370, 300 and, yeah, 375 pounds feet of torque more as well which obviously hasn't given us a massive extra advantage but you know 0.2 or so of a second is still quicker and that's all that matters at the end of the day so uh, yeah massively impressed by this and uh, yeah just goes to show just because an old car is old doesn't mean it's useless Nonetheless, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.